Natasha. Debbie. Show. The show. <laughs> Welcome to it. <laughs> Just two patriotic girls. Learning about the world. So please, don't take us the wrong way. Hello, Germany. Hi, and welcome to the Natasha and Debbie Show, Worldwide Wednesday. We're just going to call this Germany Wednesdays. And, well, well, unless you don't like us, then we won't. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call it, oh, sad Wednesdays. Oh, I think you'll fall in love with us if you keep watching. Well, we're already falling in love with you because last Wednesday, we did our very first episode on Germany. Mm -hmm. And we saw a lot of beautiful things. Absolutely falling in love. A lot of castles and lakes. and Uh-huh. <sighs> We definitely need more Germany. And so we're going to do that in a moment. But if you'd be so kind to hit that like button, we'd appreciate it. And also consider subscribing to our channel. It's absolutely free. And again, if you didn't see last week's episode, go check it out. Absolutely stunning. Um, Natasha and Debbie. And this is Cincinnati, Ohio, where we're at. And we love our city. Uh, again, very German influenced city. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we love it here. That's all. That was my and, introduction. <laughs> and we absolutely love looking at the world and mm -hmm. learning about different places and finding everything there is to find out about them. Exactly. Now, the unfortunate aspect to uh, what we have learned about Germany, and that's always comes back to World mm -hmm. War II. Well, we know there's a lot more to Germany than World War II. And we do know some, not mm -hmm. much, of, not really much. Um, but that's what's fed to us in school, you know. And uh, so this video, Geography Now, Germany, and we have Flag Friday, Ger Germany, Geography Now. Um, he went back apparently and did um, some corrections and mm. additional information. Little updates. Yeah. So there we put them together so we can watch them both. Um, and we're going to check that out. We love learning about the facts and information, the uh -huh. history. So we have a strong curiosity, but we're excited today to learn about all kinds of different stuff, culture, all that stuff. So um, this is our first time learning and mm -hmm. I'm excited about it. I know you are too. Absolutely. I can't wait to find out more about the geography. So here we go. We're going to get into learning about Germany starting right now. All right. Leader Hosen Schnitzel beer, bratwurst order bread and beer, complicated history beer, no humor, EDM, and gummy bears that will kind of like give you diarrhea, but it's like <laughs> worth it. Ugh, those are such <laughs> horrible stereotypes that every German is so sick and tired of hearing. I bet. Want a gummy bear? <laughs> it doesn't like gummy bears. Geography now! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbie. Like so we've conquered Belgium's kid. castle, jumped through Denmark's lagoon, danced through France's forest, and now we've made it to the final boss of the EU, Kingpin Germany. Level one, begin. <laughs> he sometimes goes ah, too fast. Ah, you know why I'm smiling. Yep, Germany has a lot of territorial anomalies. We'll get into that in a little bit, but first, Germany is located in central Western Europe, bordered by nine other countries, don't forget little Luxembourg, with small coasts on the North and Baltic Seas, which they own about 50 small islands. Now, Germany, like the US, is a federal republic, which has 16 smaller states, or Bundeslande. Confession time. <sighs> Didn't know they had stayed. We just found that out. Not just now. Yeah. But like a week and a half ago mm -hmm. when we talked to one of our friends on Patreon, not Patreon, I'm sorry, on Facebook, on our Facebook page. Please join us. Please, please join us on Facebook. Link's in the description. Yes. Um, but uh, yeah, he's from Germany and uh, he mentioned states and I'm like, what now? Come again? Yeah, we did not know. You didn't know. So. We're yeah. admitting it to you here now. Now I'm finding out they're 16. Please be nice to us. Well, we didn't know Australia had states so we did that too. Oh, yeah. Still, but please. Be nice. We admit what we don't know, and we're, well, that's about it. Um, so, okay, 16 states. 16 We'll have states. to learn them all. Yes, we will. And we'll have to find which one my ancestors are from. Ooh. Isn't it northern? I think so. All right. Confession time. <laughs> like the U.S. is a federal republic which has 16 smaller states, or Bundeslande, each with Bundeslander. its own constitution, three of which are cities, the capital Berlin, Hamburg, and Bremen, which is actually kind of like two cities, including Bremerhaven on the coast, but they kind of act like one thing. entity. Sorry. Fun side note, Lower Saxony is actually geographically situated further north than regular Saxony. Now let's jump into the okay. fun stuff. Now we already discussed the Jungholz Quadrapoint and the Venbon Railway enclaves with Belgium and Austria. However, there's a few more. We didn't the entire watch that. town of Bussingen am Hochrhein is surrounded by Switzerland, whereas part of the Constance is cut off by the Rhine River and surrounded by Switzerland. However, immediately across the river, a small patch of empty land on the German side actually belongs to Switzerland. Finally, they split the island okay. of a small patch of empty 
Sometimes he goes too fast. He does go very fast. <laughs> in the earlier part of the alphabet, he goes too fast in these videos, mm -hmm. which drives me crazy. So I want to get that part back one more time. Bear with me. It's cut off by the Rhine River and surrounded by Switzerland. However, immediately across the river, a small patch of empty land on the German side actually belongs to Switzerland. Finally, they okay. split the island of Usedom with Poland in the north. Germany is interesting because okay. every state in the country has its own distinct culture, dialect, history, food, traditions. I mean, Bavarians will be quite drastically different from Schleswig Holsteiners. Mecklenburg-Pommern will be different from Saarland. This all has to do with ancient and recent history. Basically, in the quickest way I can summarize this, Germanic tribes, Roman wars, Charlemagne, Main, three kingdoms. This guy marries an Italian, creating a whole new mess called the Holy Roman Empire, made up of 300 smaller separate kingdoms, states, and dukedoms, which had nothing to do with Romans. Teutonic Knights, Brandenburgs became Prussia, Habsburgs became Austrians, Lithuanians and Poles made their own thing, whereas the Hungarians joined the Austrians. Wars, wars, battles, battles, Napoleon comes over and messes everything up, and finally, German nationalism surges, and in 1871, Otto von Bismarck creates the first proto German unified state. And then they're all like, oh. <sighs> yeah, let's take a breath. For him, I mean, <laughs> how did he do that? He runs through it. Does that make anyone else's oh. anxiety? Like he does go heightened? super fast. Is that heightened? I'm like, breathe. Uh huh. Okay. Huh? Now once we get to the history, we can slow down. Huh? Look, little pieces. Yeah, we're gonna just know right now. We plan on looking at more videos with more in depth information on mm -hmm. all that he just. Exactly. I got a fraction of that. Yeah. Jeez. Okay. Ah, but we can all breathe for a second. Breathe. And now, no, breathe. Now hold a breath. Just kidding. <laughs> oh, dang. We came late to this game. We got to scramble for some colonies. And that's how all of these countries at one point spoke German. Oh, and also keep in mind, like 300 years before this, a German banking company obtained colonial rights to Venezuela for like 20 years. They were looking for the lost city of El Dorado. So technically, you can kind of say Germans colonized the Americas, but it wasn't like a nationalized conquest thing. Fast forward even more, and then you get sure. World War One. The monarchy ends. Treaty of Versailles. They lose land. Nazis come in. World War Two. Germany splits in two for about 40 years. And then finally, Finally, we get the Germany we have today. East Germany consisting of these states is today still quite different from the rest of Germany as it was first occupied and influenced by the Soviet Union. They are generally not as well off economically as the rest of the country as you can still see the blocky Soviet style buildings sprawled throughout the regions. In fact, the city of Berlin was split in half and the west side was actually an enclave of West Germany only accessible by train and highway. You can even see from a satellite image the divide. East Berlin still uses the yellowish tinted sulfur oh, really? paper light bulbs, whereas the west still uses fluorescent and mercury arc white tinted light bulbs. Now the funny yeah. thing is, although Berlin is the largest city in Germany, the busiest airports are actually Frankfurt, Munich, Dusseldorf, with Berlin Tegel ranking at number four. Otherwise, some top mm. notable landmarks and spots would be the Brandenburg Gate, the Valhalla, Cologne Cathedral, the Ulminster Church, the tallest in the world, the Berlin Victory Column, and hundreds awesome. and hundreds of castles all over. The most notable one probably being Neuschwanstein, the concept behind mm -hmm. Cinderella Castle. Castles Hold all on. over. The most notable one probably being Neuschwanstein, the concept behind Disney's Cinderella Castle. Germany also has over 400 zoos, more than any other country in the world. And really? Of course, everybody wow. knows about the Autobahn, the highway system in which uh. if you see this sign, it means there's no speed limit. Yeah, that's all I know about it. That's all I know about it. <laughs> Never seen it. Have you seen the Autobahn? I have not seen it, but I did work for a lady that actually went over there and worked for what? about a year. And First time hearing of this. Back. Yeah. So when I owned one of the salons, she went over there for a while. Hi, Natasha. Hi. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> 20 years, and I never she heard said, that. yeah, it was uh, interesting, quite thrilling to drive on the Autobahn. And it's like that for a huge portion of the roadway. And no wonder, considering how vast and wide those cultivated countrysides can get, time for Great. level two. Okay, think of it this way. In Germany, the more down you go, the more up you move. Basically, right. Germany lies on the Atlantic Shelf in the north that starts with the mud flats in the North Sea. Seriously, this island right here is accessible only for a few hours by foot until the tide comes and floods everything. Then everything Whoa. just kind of oh. creeps up into the Alps in the south by Bavaria and Baden-Württemberg, with the highest mountain, Zugspitze, located right Zugspitze. along the border with Austria. Kind of like France, Germany is filled with a vast irrigating network of rivers like the Spree, Elbe, Wesse, Rhine, and of course, the mighty Danube that starts here. About a third of the land is arable and another third is woodland. And after a millennia mm. of civilization, Germans have cultivated the crap out of their country. Most agriculture, of course, happens in the North Flat Plains and the central Makes regions sense. of the country, which is, by the way, kind of like Europe's tornado alley. Really? It's positioned oh. sandwiched between the Arctic blasts of Scandinavia and the moist, warm jet streams of the Mediterranean below. I Germany see. can be an atmospheric war zone in the summer. There are more tornadoes really? on average in Germany than any other country in Europe. Speaking of flat. I had no idea. <laughs> None. Wonder what it compares to us. You can win that, I'm saying. We're not trying to compete with that one. But yeah. we have a lot. Um, huh. Okay. No, just, just didn't know that. I appreciate that 
three seconds of him showing that mm -hmm. though, because I I like to know about the weather, the climate. It's interesting. Yeah, um, that, that was interesting. Look at that. That does that looks that I looks know. scary. Yeah, <laughs> frightening. War zone in the summer. There are more tornadoes on average in Germany than any other country. Not know that. Speaking of flat farmland, mm. Germany is the world's largest rye and hop producer. Germans absolutely no, love their bread. There are over 300 different kinds of bread in the country, Explains more types than any other country in the world, and almost every meal incorporates some kind of slice or small bun or brötchen. As of it should. You're Italian, German. <laughs> like, there you go. You bread loving bread. woman. And I hate bread. I'm sorry. Don't get mad mm. at me. Bring One thing on. you got to learn about us is we're really honest. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I won't say anything to make people like me. I'm just me. Um, I'll eat bread. every piece of bread down there. You you would just like put your yeah, face in there and just, just bob for bread. Mm -hmm. that, yep. <laughs> Uh, that makes a lot, this answers a lot of questions I have had. <laughs> Almost every meal incorporates some kind of slice or small bun or brötchen of bread. Us do gluten free? Nein! <laughs> Germans are heavy meat eaters, specifically in pork. They basically know every possible way to cook a pig. Over 50 different types of sausage Schnitzel. exist mm. alongside schnitzels, rouladen, sauerbraten, schweinsachse, and at a big party you might find Spanfackel. Beer reigns supreme all over as the third largest consumers of beer after the I Czech Republic. Even their president has no problem with public intoxication. And Austria. Austria. Germany is world renowned for their beer, which, by the way, follows the Reinheitsgebot rule in which they are only allowed to use water, hops, malt, and sometimes yeast. Hmm. Is this where Cincinnati got our brewery? Rheingeist? Yeah, probably. One of our yeah. bigger local breweries here in Cincinnati is called Rheingeist. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then we have that area over the Rhine, spelled R H I N E. Yeah, there's a <clears throat> whole lot of. Uh, <laughs> it's only like taking 42 on years for me to get to mm -hmm. this. Huh. Mm -hmm. We have a Heidelberg brewery? Mm -hmm. Or a distributor or something like that. I don't uh, know. I didn't know this. <laughs> follows the Reinheitsgebot rule in which they are only allowed to use water, hops, malt, and sometimes yeast. Nonetheless, about 1,300 breweries exist, pumping out over 5,000 brands. The oldest wow. continuously existing brewery in the world, started by Benedictine monks in 1040 AD, can be found here. Germany takes the environment very seriously and for the past two decades has Good. been going on a major green revolution. As of today, they have the largest installed solar power capacity and green infrastructure practices like home installed turbines and solar panels have seen Love a resurgence in the past 10 years. Forests dominate the southern regions where the landscape gets hillier and oh. mountainous. The most famous one being the Black Forest. I can't wait to look at that. Mm -hmm. In Baden-Württemberg. Deer, bears, boar, foxes, badgers, and the national animal, the eagle, can be found thriving in these parts. Huh. We have a lot in common. <laughs> We do. <laughs> Big scary animals, and our eagle's totally the opposite of that one. I but... mean, ours is bald, but you know. <laughs> Not really, though. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> I've never seen, I love birds, by the way. Um, that's a cool looking <laughs> eagle. What kind of eagle is that? Someone let me know. <laughs> it's a haired bird, eagle. Ours is not bald. <laughs> Nonetheless, economically, Germany is known mostly for their exceptional engineering and industry production. Companies we've all heard of like Volkswagen, BMW, Mercedes, Benz, Porsche, Audi, Telecom, Nivea, DHL, Bosch. Adidas! Toma! Adidas! Toma! <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like the whole Biscoito Bolacha thing from Brazil. Remember? Well, we have mud flats, have tomatoes, too, pork, beer, mountains. All that's missing is people. Level three. Culture. Oh. Okay. Fun little side note, in Germany, this is three, not this. Now, if the EU was no. a family, Germany would kind of oh. be like the dad who got out of rehab, reconciled with his wife and kids, and is taking his new life very seriously as he is haunted by the demons of his past every day. First of all, the country has about 82 million people and is the most populated in the EU, second most in Europe after Russia, and has the fourth largest nominal GDP in the world. About 80% of the country identifies as ethnically German, 12% other Europeans, mostly mm -hmm. Polish, Italian, Dutch, and so on. Turks mm -hmm. make up about 3.5%, Asians at 2%, and the rest are made up of other groups like Africans and Americans. Mm. Also, they use the Hi. euro, they use the C and F type outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Germany is yes! without a doubt a global- <laughs> I could not drive the Autobahn on the left side. You drive no, on the right? That'd be extra scary. Thank you. <laughs> it's funny, that's the one thing we're both like, yeah. <laughs> Every time we go into another country, yes. Well, when you don't, it's just, no. Is it scary to go on the other side? It is. Sorry, thank you. <sighs> thank you. For lots of things. Right now, just for that. Uh -huh. But thank you for lots of things. <laughs> I'm not saying this the American way. You'll get mad at me. I Ad, need it. Is it Adidas? Adidas? Added? I, I don't know how to I say it the proper it. way. Yeah. 
Coal powerhouse. It is the strongest economy in the EU and makes up about 16% of the union's population. It's the third largest exporter and importer of goods in the world. After the United States, Germany is also the second most popular global migration destination. Germany experiences a high standard of living, tuition free universities, if you get accepted, that is, a mostly government subsidized universal healthcare system, about a quarter is still privatized, and state pension for retirement at age 65. Now, when it comes to language, things get a little tricky. Each state kind of has their own type of German. However, to get by, most huh. Germans learn how to speak Hochdeutsch or High German, which is the standard dialect. The European Charter, however, protects the minority languages of Frisian, Danish, Romani, Sorbian, Frisian. which is like a Slavic-based language used along the Czech-Polish border, and Plattdeutsch or Low German, which has similarities to Dutch and is typically used by the Amish and Mennonite communities across the world. In terms of regional dis Okay. I already can't pronounce other countries' places, so that's going to make it so much easier. <laughs> Distinctions though, Germany is kind of divided into five cultural areas Rhineland, okay. East and Middle Deutschland, North Deutschland, Baden Württemberg, and Bavaria. Rhineland is on the west side and has a culture somewhat more influenced by France, more Catholics, Carnival celebrations are huge out here. East and Middle Germany was the part that used to be its own country for 40 years as it was influenced by the Soviets. Sorbians can also be found here too. Northern Germany has a coastal sea culture that identifies closer with Denmark and the Netherlands. They are also known for being kind of quiet okay. and reserved. Baden Württemberg has an interesting Swabian culture where they speak a dialect so thick that only about 40% of it is intelligible to other Germans. And then you have really? Bavaria, which is where the Americanized, perpetuated stereotypes about Germany came know, from sorry. the theater hosen, dirndls, half timber, beer houses, and cuckoo clocks. For the record, Germans are sick of those stereotypes. <laughs> it's like saying all Americans are cowboys with guns and horses. Speaking of yeah, stereotypes, we're not. some of the well, stereotypes you know. in Germany include things like Saxons <laughs> being very indecisive, Berliners are always bragging about themselves, Swabians are stingy, Bavarians Never drink too these. much, Hessians talk too much, Holsteiners don't talk enough, and so on. Words oh, differ from regions too. <laughs> For example, in High German, you would say Auf Wiedersehen, but in Bavarian, you would say Fiatigot. In Kölsch, you would say Tschüss, and in Rhineland, you might Tschüss. say Ayus. And there's so many Ayus. compound words that get really long and complicated, like Rindfleischer, Ticketierungsüberwachungsaufgaben, Übertragungsgesetz. <laughs> this is because many words are Mertudig, or no. ambiguous words that are kind of elongated to give off an extensive meaning. Germans have very vivid imaginations mm. and make up words for everything. Like my favorite word, Backpfeifengesicht. Not this time. By the way, for the record, this letter <laughs> makes a double S sound. However, spelling reformers have tried to decrease the usage of this letter in recent years, which has led to some protests. Germans also love dubbing everything from foreign media into German. Some like this, some don't, but either way, it's here to stay. About 60% of the country identifies at least nominally as Christians, split between Protestants and Catholics. Germany was even the birthplace okay. of the Protestant Reformation, split from the Catholic Church by Martin Luther. Otherwise, the rest are mostly agnostic or I'm religious with a noticeable community of Muslims, mostly from the huge Turkish and Middle Eastern communities at about 5%, <laughs> as well as a few Jews, Buddhists, and Hindus rounding up the remainder 1%. To kind of get a feel of what it's like to be German, you kind of have to understand where where they've come from. After World War II, they kind of had a lot of work to do. However, it wasn't until the mid 50s and early 60s that the Wirtschaftswunder or economic wonder happened to which almost everybody wonder. got to work. Basically, this guy envisioned and implemented a social market economy combined with free market capitalism alongside socialist policies that established fair competition in a welfare state. GDP increased by 80%, investments by 120%, Dang. labor forces were wow. utilized to the maximum. Things started to get better. In Germany, all children yeah. are corralled into general public schools until age 10 when they are given the option to enroll in three different types of middle schools. Gymnasium geared towards focusing on higher linguistic, mathematic, and science fields for universities. Realschule, okay. a middle ground type of school. And Hauptschule, a school that is geared towards helping kids that seem to show promise in specific vocation or trades. Germany also has the largest yeah, music market really in the cool. EU and the third in the world after the US and Japan. They love preserving their heritage and culture through music and art. In fact, there are around 130 national orchestras mostly supported by public money. Ooh. and artists get a 50% reduction in health insurance through a special type of offer in the legal system. One thing that still kind that's of surprisingly really maintains itself in Germany is the mindset of Vergangenheitsbewaltigung. Totally butchered that! Which kind of translates to a lingering <coughs> sense of guilt from the past. Germans have reportedly mm. some of the lowest levels of national pride, and unless if you're at a soccer game, chances are you will almost never see anyone holding a German flag or waving it in any kind of like patriotic setting. It's weird. I can't say I've ever seen that on mm -hmm. TV, a German flag. like. So we do a lot of military mm -hmm. um, videos here on the channel, and we're very outspoken about our love for our military here in the U.S. and our allied militaries. Absolutely. And like I said at the beginning of this video, um, you know, one of the reasons we want to learn about Germany, well, there's a bunch of reasons, <laughs> a bunch of reasons. Mm -hmm. But one thing we want to learn is, one of the reasons is because most of what we know is from World War II. 
which exactly. of course is not good stuff, right? Um, but we don't want that to be the only picture we have in our daggone heads about Germany. We want right. to we want to make sure we we learn real Germany. You know, while we do videos on that topic with things with um like the British military and things like mm -hmm. that about Germany in World War II per se, it's not about anyone now. <laughs> it's not about that. And we have no nothing but love for Germany. I mean, um, absolutely. So absolutely weird, but it's kind of how things are. You monster! They've made great strides to move on from the past. Nazi flags and Mein Kampf are incredibly illegal items to own in Germany, and they even have a rule: the Volksverzug, which basically says you cannot talk trash by denying the past atrocities. Some people say this infringes on free speech. <laughs> Others say it's good because it solidifies truth. Otherwise, some notable Germans throughout history include <laughs> Charlemagne, although he was a Frank, but. Eh. If that's true about the whole, you can't have the Nazi stuff, then uh, I just don't think that's true. I just, that didn't sound right. Sorry. Yeah. That's not right. truth. Otherwise, some notable <clears throat> Germans throughout history include Charlemagne, although he was a Frank, but eh, I guess it kind of counts. Albrecht, Dürer, David Friedrich, Gutenberg, Bach, Beethoven, Carl Benz, Albert Einstein, although Americans would mm -hmm. like to claim that he moved to the U.S. and became an American. Johannes we Kepler, try. Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, Friedrich Schiller, us. Michael Schumacher, Alex von Humboldt, and of course Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels co-founded Marxism. <laughs> <clears throat> but one thing Germans do best would have to be diplomacy. <laughs> to this day, the German passport holds the most visa-free nations out of any other country in the world, just beating Sweden. Therefore, you can kind of conclude that <laughs> Germany kind of knows how to relate to people. Let's find out how in the final round, level four. He's cracking me up. He slowed down a little bit. Germany knows how to make friends. They have over 220 diplomatic missions abroad and over 350 honorary consuls and have an incredibly high position of authority in the EU. Their closest African friend would probably be Namibia. As a former German colony way back in the 19th century, Namibia held on relations and to this day, German is still a recognized language in Namibia. Germans have been supporting and sharing that. ties yeah. both economically and ideologically for over a century. India and South Korea okay. are really close friends in Asia. India supported both East and West Germany during the Cold War and after unification they were like woohoo even better and germany is to south korea what japan is to france they love to piggyback off of each other's ideas and cultures especially in the automotive industry many south koreans were sent to germany yeah. after the korean war to work abroad and study and germans have been growing in fascination with visiting south korea the u.s is probably the closest ally outside of the eu about 30 percent of americans <laughs> claim german heritage and after world war ii the marshall plan allowed the u.s to give post-war aid to germany which helped kickstart the economic recovery germany was a key figure in the formation of the state of Israel after World War II, which after the Holocaust left an obligation to invest in the building up of a Jewish community. Turkey is probably the closest Middle Eastern ally as the Turks make up the largest Asian demographic in Germany, although many of them may or may not also identify as Kurds. But since Kurds don't have a state of their own, they usually go under Turkish passports when immigrating and are documented as such. Their best friends, however, would probably be literally all their neighbors. The thing is, Germany is kind of like Bosnia and Herzegovina in which, by default, they kind of get friends based off of the regional alliances. Bavarians get along with Austrians, Baden-Württembergs get along with Switzerland. East Germany has good relations with the Slavic countries. The Rhine states love Belgium, Luxembourg, and France. And the North side loves the Netherlands and Denmark. France, though, is kind of like the trophy wife of Germany, as the two have trophy had the angry start, but then eventually <laughs> fell in love and worked together beautifully. France is like the beautiful, flashy spokesperson for the EU that stands in the spotlight as Germany stands in the background, managing all the money and logistical work. In conclusion, although Germanic peoples have existed for thousands of years, an actual unified German state didn't appear until kind of recently, and the brief time that they've been around, <laughs> they've kind of gone through some of the most intense world revolutionizing historical events possibly imagined. Yet they've come out working hard and building their way up to become a world superpower. You got to give it to them. There's something about the Germans. And with that, That's final huge. boss level complete. Hey, Jabber. Oh, is this oh. on? This is that Flag Friday thing where he comes back and this just a couple minutes long and fixes some things he just may like have gotten update. wrong. But just really quickly. No, I, I think it's the most admirable thing and the, one of the coolest things ever to have gone through you know, two world wars. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's plenty of countries that, you know, were affected by the wars, but to be able to build yourself up as Germany has done mm -hmm. and become a huge player in the world, like a monstrously exactly. big one um, and very well respected too. Mm -hmm. Like that's huge. That is you amazing. Know? That's huge. To come back and... And, and kick butt. Exactly. And kick butt. Okay. So this is where he's going to correct some things and I think maybe add some stuff in. I don't know. That's what I was told. Flag Friday, Germany, geography now. It's not that much longer, so. Yes, it is. Hey, Jogger peeps, welcome back to Flag Friday. So, a little disclaimer, I'm gonna start using Flag Friday as kind of like a platform to address the mistakes I made in the country episodes, okay? So, in the Germany episode, I misspelled Wirtschaftswunder, and technically, it's not completely noticed. illegal to own Nazi memorabilia in Germany. I 
No, oh, I said that. <laughs> not completely illegal. Yeah, hold so. on, you're right. I believe Sorry. it's illegal to sell it or produce and print well, Mein Kampf, but it's not illegal okay, to like, own it. Sense. I'm not sure. You Germans have a lot of weird laws. Also, I believe no. Beethoven was actually born in a German city, not Belgian, but there was somebody who was Belgian on his family. I don't, it's confusing. I think there are a few more things, but that, those were like the biggest ones. We're here to cover the German flag. <laughs> now, this is going to be a little hard because there's a lot of backstory and it's going to be really confusing. Oh, we're talking I about the flag. I guess we'll get a few Friday. things wrong with this, mm. but I'm going to try my best. All right. So, without further ado. Oh, I got the flag. Ah, Germany. Don't make them get all Wirtschaftswunder on you, or else you'll end up <laughs> Vergangenheitsbewaltigung. So anyway, the flag. The flag is a what horizontal tricolor of black, red, and gold. Remember, it's <laughs> gold, not yellow. And mm. that's where the oh, animation is going to have to stop, because technically there isn't an official symbolic interpretation of the colors of the German flag, and a lot of people will disagree really? on where exactly the colors are derived from. Here's what we do know. Sometimes really? the colors are referred to as the Weimar Republic colors, named after the Weimar Republic, which took over the country after World War I one and was first adopted as a national flag in 1919. However, that wasn't the first oh, wow. time the flag okay. appeared in German history. The first time it appeared was actually in the 19th century during the 1948 revolutions or the March revolutions in which pan-Germanism was just starting to develop in its early stages as the Holy 19th. Roman Empire was dissolving yeah. and all that Napoleon stuff was going on. It was kind of like an on and off used flag until the German Empire came and used the black white red configuration. Some people ah. say that the black and white colors were derived from the Teutonic Order in which they used black crosses on white fields to identify themselves. Now, the Holy Roman Empire mm -hmm. used a white cross on a red field, so they kind of felt compelled to kind of like mesh those three colors together. But how did the gold come into play? Here are some of the most prominent Here's theories. That? Back in the day, most of what is Germany theories. today lied in the Holy <coughs> Roman Empire, which funny enough had nothing to do with Romans, and the flag for the empire was a yellow banner with a black eagle sporting a red oh, beak and talons. Okay, fair enough. Mm -hmm. However, some Scary. people say that it's also inspired from the uniforms of the Lutzel Free Corps, a militaristic group of volunteers who fought against Napoleon in the 1800s as they wore black uniforms with red trims and gold buttons. However, it's also it's said that in 1919, the three colors were attributed <coughs> to the three main political parties, the Democratic, the Centralist, and the Republican parties of Germany. However, many vexillologists might say that in the long run, the red might be derived from the Hanseatic League, which was like a commercial confederation on the north shores of Germany and other North and Baltic Sea states in the 14th century, whereas the black and gold are most likely probably attributed to the Austrian Empire, as the Austrians were kind of seen as like Germans back then. I don't know, you guys decide what story you like. Eh, whatever. Anyway, this flag was actually the flag of both East and West Germany for about 10 years until East Germany was like, hmm, we gotta kind of set ourselves apart and distinguish ourselves from West Germany. So they put an emblem in their flag and then they finally reunited in the 90s. Speaking of which, that brings us to the coat of arms. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh, it looks just like the Holy Roman Empire flag. Yeah, yeah. good eye, good eye. That's where it's kind of derived from. But there's a lot of backstory behind that too. The symbol of the eagle goes way back. Like, Roman times way back. The Aquila, or the Eagle, was a prominent image used in various Roman symbols. After a while, the Byzantines adopted it, but it was like a double-headed eagle at the time. Then in the 13th century with the Holy Roman Empire, Frederick II granted the Imperial Eagle on a golden shield to his state. Of course, over the years, variations of these images evolved over time. Of course, Nazi Germany kind of screwed things up, but essentially the Imperial Eagle stayed throughout the ages, except in East Germany when they became their own state. For about 35 years, they used the hammer and compass on a circular and emblem emblazoned by sheaves of wheat on each side with a German tricolor banner below. Fun side note, East Germany almost used a black, red, white configuration flag and West Germany almost considered using a Nordic cross pattern. Wouldn't that be kind of interesting if Germany yeah, actually ended up with this flag? Well, that was a boatload of information huh. that I am trying really hard right now to pretend like I completely understand myself, but deep down inside I'm actually secretly yeah. very blank. Totally. This has been Flag Friday. You've just been flagged. <laughs> stay cool. Stay tuned. Who else has a headache? <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of information, a lot of speculation. On the flag part? Yes, yes. definitely on the flag. It's kind of like, well, maybe. I'm going to leave that part alone. Yep. <laughs> you can leave us a comment and uh, tell us your thoughts on that part. For the rest of the video, though, at the beginning, it was a little too fast. Um, mm -hmm. Then he did kind of slow down a bit. But I really did enjoy learning a lot of this. Um, I wasn't much I knew. <laughs> you know, I'm saying a lot of this. Right. I can't think of what I really knew. Uh, not much. I mean, I, I've heard of the Audubon, like I said, seen yep. a picture or two of it. Nice. Um, don't know anyone unlike you who's actually driven it. I haven't um, driven it. And yeah, no, there's a lot there. The history stuff, I want to go back and learn some more about that. Oh, definitely. Um, there's just a lot. <laughs> there's so much to Germany and I can't wait to get into all the different parts of it. 
Yeah, take things more slowly slow and it like down. pick a subject, a, a mm -hmm. you know, a, of time or a place or whatever, and and find something on that yeah. and go a little bit slower. But I still love these geography now videos because they give us a nice little foundation. Mm -hmm. They're a wedding of the whistle. <laughs> it is. It's kind of like the the places to visit. It just gives you a little glimpse in there. Mm -hmm. It starts to make you fall in love and. Now this is like your first date and you're like, okay, now I'm really interested. So now it's time to get to know you even better. So basically Debbie's saying she wants a third date. I do. Would you like to go out? Let us know. Let us know if you'd like a third date. If you guys like this episode, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. We'd love to have you. And again, if you're in Germany, please, or anywhere, <laughs> please come join us on our Facebook page. You'll find that mm -hmm. link in the description of this video and all of our videos. And we'll be back next Wednesday with a special German episode. Don't miss it. We'll see you next time, guys. Until then, please love like jazz. Be as strong as Tyson. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.